a lot of test fitting and mocking up. We're at a point now where we're very close to final assembly. We're sending out our insert plates to WPC treatment for friction reduction as well as surface hardening. That's going to give us a little bit of added protection, durability, and lifespan out of this beautiful motor. We're going to have the same process done to these beautiful Chip Ursu peripheral port housings. Now we've got the Teflon encapsulated O-rings. See if I can get it to focus. Installed on the oil control rings themselves. They went on nicely. You can see for the inner, very nice fitment. It's not loose. Slightly tight. And then for the secondary outer, the O-ring resides on the inside channel and you can see it's not bunching up in excess and it is not loose in any way as of fitment. So we're looking very good. We'll be pressing these down in and then that will be the final rotor parts installation for rotor assembly pre-assembly of the motor. Looking good. And now we've got our first set installed and you can see they're sitting in there very nicely. And They can do it. Some nice movement as well. So it's still sitting on those springs. We are building a billet aluminum peripheral port 13B with lightweight rotors that has almost every component WPC treated that is deemed necessary to WPC treat, race bearings, modified stationary gears, and even a custom mounting location. Over here you can see some of our components. These are Series 6 uh, FD3S rotors, brand new from Mazda USA or Mazda Japan for that matter. Uh, they went directly to Chip or Sue, and were lightened. We then uh, had Mazda Trix side clearance them, or rather I did that, but we'll just say Mazda Trix did it, and we've got WPC treated race bearings, and we are building two motors, and this particular motor has Teflon encapsulated oil control O-rings as well in it that are being tested. Everything is WPC treated, and our side seals are toleranced to Mazda speed specification, which is 1.5 thousandths as far as clearance to the corner seal goes on one side, not both sides. Everything's nice and tight. Uh, WPC treated eccentric shaft, both uh, hardening and friction reduction. And uh, we have utilized the original jets, uh, oil jets, and everything has been uh, loctited and torqued down as well. Final assembly. We're now acetoned and final cleaned. So we're going to drop in our Teflon encapsulated O-rings. Nice uh, thin coat of Hylomar into the water seal grooves. There we have our Teflon encapsulated O-rings installed. And I will be painting a thin layer of Hylomar across the top of them as well. Um, the Hylomar both helps with the seal as well as helping the O-rings stay in the proper location. So we now have our water O-rings in and our first rotor housing on, which is our front rotor housing. Um, we've also hylomard in our factory uh, dowel pin O-rings. And you can see we're just uh, making progress on this beautiful motor. Uh, because it's a billet motor, I'm just using these three uh, studs to help with alignment. 
Next we'll be dropping in the front rotor and our first three ceramic one-piece apex seals. It's hard to see, but we've uh, put assembly lube on the main bearing and rotor bearing. And if you notice, I do not uh, put assembly lube on the rotor um, or Vaseline or grease or anything like that. Uh, 20 years, I've never had an issue. I really don't think it's necessary. And if the seals are properly set up, nothing's going to fall out. There it is, rotors in. Next, we're dropping in the eccentric shaft. Eccentric shaft in, and uh, next we'll be installing our ceramic apex seals. We're going with the Ionetti single piece or one piece two millimeter seals, and we set these rotors up and this motor up for the recommended tolerances prior to WPC. So after that work had been done, lightning, machining, balancing, then everything was WPC treated. All three ceramic seals went in beautifully, and we've put just a little Hylomar down on a couple areas, and now we'll prepare our center plate to drop down on. Just dropped our O-rings into the Hylomard O-ring grooves on this uh, center plate. O-rings in, we're Hylomard up. Going to uh, pull these studs out and uh, slide our single piece dowel pins in as it's time and uh, drop the center plate on. We've also added some assembly lube to the top side of the rotor so as the engine gets rotated once assembled everything will be lubed, lubed but um, I don't put a lot of lube in the pockets because I wouldn't want any type of uh, engine lube, oil getting in and displacing any of the ability for the water o-rings to seal via metal to metal or via the o-ring. Final acetone wipe down done, high Lamard up, and we've inserted our solid dowel pins and removed the tension bolts that were uh, helping align. Now with our middle plate on, we'll uh, wipe it down with acetone. Drop in our Teflon water O-rings, some Hylomar, and get that next rotor housing on there. We now have our rear rotor housing on. Uh, Teflon encapsulated O-rings, hylomar in. Our factory oil dowel pin O-rings also hylomar in. Everything's clean and aligned. You can see we have these solid dowel pins coming up through the bottom. That's our alignment. Next up, we'll be dropping in the rear rotor, as well as dropping in all of our titanium studs, which we had custom made for this project. Beautiful, lightweight. Rear rotor in. We uh, assembly lubed up the bearings, make sure they're nice and lubed. Again, not uh, getting much lube into the combustion chambers. Doesn't need to be there. And then, uh, We'll drop in the apex seals and then all of our titanium studs. You can see one of the matched Ionetti uh, ceramic apex seals going in. I like to install them uh, once the rotor housing and rotor is in. And uh, just a little bit of lube on this leading edge as you're bringing it down in. Obviously you don't want to scratch the rotor housing. Just some tips and uh, what's going on. All right, all the apex seals are in, and we've got some lube. Drop the studs in. We now have all of our titanium studs in, and uh, see my little red lines, all of them are torqued down, fitting beautifully. Next, we'll be dropping the rear plate on. Got our rear plate o-ringed and hylomard, acetoned, and we'll be dropping it onto the back of the motor. Well, that is beautiful. Rear plate dropped on very smoothly. And uh, we'll now be starting our torque sequence to clamp the motor down. So 
we've installed and greased our o-rings that are the sealing o-rings for the studs and then we'll be dropping on an ARP chamfered washer and ARP 12 point hardware well that sure is pretty we just finished torquing down our titanium studs that are in place of our tension bolts we used five pound incremental steps, gradually working our way up to Billet Inc.'s recommended torque, uh, which is the same torque I run on my race motors. And we used the Mazda factory pattern to torque it down. And uh, look at this, buttery. With everything appropriately torqued, we're now gonna flip it over and start to work on our front end. There we go. We'll now be starting our front end stack, thrust uh, plates and bearings, and these have also been WPC treated, reducing friction and wear. Uh, front assembly going together. Uh, we've got our spacer in there. We'll be checking that before final assembly to make sure our end play is right. And then uh, one more Torrington bearing and then our balanced front counterweight we'll be dropping down on. Front counterweight balanced by Mazda Trix. Just bringing that right down. Main uh, drive gear for the Mazda Speed Factory dry sump. One of the reasons I really like the factory dry sumps, they're gear driven. Factory stack is looking good, so now we'll be checking our front end play. So we've now got our uh, front stack together and uh, torqued down, and we're going to check front end play. Setting up our front end play, uh, we had a D spacer in there and we were a little excessive coming in over three thousandths of an inch. I like to get it down closer to two thousandths of an inch, targeting Mazda speed race tolerances. Setting up front end play and uh, we're looking good. Right about two thousandths of an inch. And then now we've got our keyway in, factory keyway, locking everything onto the shaft. Now we've got our factory dry sump we set up in a previous video, and a metal factory gasket for sealing. Now we'll put a little FIPG silicone on both sides. And now that our front end play is set, our pellet is in with spring, our keyway is in, we can attach our front cover. And we've got our gasket down on there with a very thin layer of FIPG on both sides, Mazda factory gasket. I think that's what everybody was waiting for. Nice uh, billet 13B peripheral port, Wiggins clamps, chipper Sioux, Billet Inc. Mazda Speed front cover, KMR assembled, lightweight rotors, stainless steel inserts, the works. This is a beautiful motor. Sounds beautiful, turns over beautiful. We're about done.